Mr. President, earlier this year, I was incredibly fortunate to be part of the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday, a moving and meaningful experience in Selma, Alabama. 50 years ago, during the marches from Selma to Montgomery, civil rights leaders and everyday citizens of this country put their lives at risk in a passionate, nonviolent demonstration for a more equal and just society. The passion and courage for equality reflected in the historic marches in Selma was the culmination of decades of struggle shown by men and women across this country. In my home state of Indiana, a place that takes great pride in high school basketball, it is fitting that 60 years ago, the civil rights movement played out on the hardwoods of Indiana basketball courts. On March 19, 1955, at the Butler Fieldhouse, the Flying Tigers of Crispus Attucks High School became not only the first all-African-American high school athletic team to win a state championship in Indiana, but the first all-African-American high school athletic team to win a state championship in the United States. Led by future NBA Hall of Famer and maybe the best basketball player of all time, Oscar Robertson, the Flying Tigers finished their 1955 season with a 30-1 record, capped with a 97-74 victory over Gary Roosevelt High School in the state final. Before Crispus Attucks' historic 1955 season, no Indianapolis basketball team had won the Indiana State Championship in the tournament's 45-year history. Attic's win was a source of pride, particularly for the African-American community. Crispus Attic's High School was founded in 1927 as a segregated high school for black students. The Indiana High School Athletic Association initially refused to grant Crispus Attucks membership, and the school could not play in the state tournament until 1942. Even then, many of the all-white schools refused to play Crispus Attucks. The Crispus Attucks team would often have to travel dozens or even hundreds of miles to find teams willing to play against them. Because the school's gym was built too small for home games, every game was an away game for the Flying Tigers. Despite the segregation and racism, Crispus Attucks thrived. African American educators could not teach in white schools, so Crispus Attucks attracted an elite African American community. Nearly every teacher had either a doctorate or a master's degree. Teachers at Crispus Attucks included former Tuskegee Airmen and members of the Golden 13, the first African-American U.S. Naval officers. One of those teachers was Ray Crow. A native of Johnson County, Indiana, Crow became head coach of the basketball team in 1950. He instituted a new, fast-paced style of offense and was a coach who cared deeply about his players. Crow's coaching style brought enormous success to the team. Soon, the same white schools that refused to play Crispus Attucks wanted to schedule games with them. Lacking a home court, the team would frequently play at Butler Fieldhouse on the campus of Butler University. The Flying Tigers packed the house, regularly attracting 10,000 fans or more to a high school basketball game. Still, the team was not treated fairly. When traveling for games, the players were unable to stay at hotels or to eat in restaurants that only served white people. That wasn't the only challenge the Flying Tigers confronted. They also had to contend with bias from the referees. Coach Crow used to tell the team that they had to play against seven people every game, the five players and the two refs. Yet the Flying Tigers kept winning. In 1954, the team made it all the way to the state semifinals, even with several key players missing from injuries. 
The stage was set for the 55 season when a junior forward named Oscar Robertson was ready to lead the team. And he had some of the most amazing teammates you could ever find. Coach Crow and the Flying Tigers finished the regular season with one loss. They breezed through the first four games of the tournament, winning by an average of 28 points per game. Then they faced Muncie Central, another powerhouse basketball program. And the Flying Tigers won by a point. But all you need to win by, Mr. President, is one point. Over 15,000 fans came to the Butler Fieldhouse to watch Crispus Attucks beat New Albany in the state semifinal, and then again to witness history as Crispus Attucks defeated another all-African-American team, Gary Roosevelt, 97 to 74, to become state champs. The trailblazing players who made it possible included Johnny Mac Brown, Bill Brown, Willie Burnley, John Clemens, John Gibson, Bill Hampton, Willie Merriweather, Sam Milton, Shedrick Mitchell, Stanford Patton, Oscar Robertson, and Bill Scott. It was a crowning achievement. The big O, Oscar Robertson said, I remember that night. They called us Indianapolis addicts, not Crispus addicts. To me, that sort of meant we had arrived. They just wanted you to win. They didn't care what color you were. There was a tradition in Indiana that after every state championship, the winning team would climb on a fire truck and then be taken around the city of Indianapolis for a victory parade. The parade route always included a stop at Monument Circle for pictures and celebration, followed by a tour of downtown Indy. But as the fire truck carrying the Flying Tigers approached Monument Circle, it didn't stop, and it didn't continue through downtown. Instead, the fire truck brought the players and fans to a park in the city's African-American neighborhood. Crispus Attucks, the team that had just made American history, didn't receive the celebration they deserved simply because of the color of their skin. And when Attucks repeated in 56 and again won the state championship, the fire truck took the same detour. Change did not come overnight, but the Crispus Attucks basketball team inspired many, many schools to begin recruiting African-American players along with starting to end their long-held policies of segregation. Oscar Robertson, Mr. Robertson later said, by us winning, it sped up the integration. I truly believe that us winning the state championship brought Indianapolis together. In March, members of the Indianapolis-based Family Girls Youth Mentoring Program honored the seven living members of the 1955 championship team, and the celebration included the traditional victory tour through the streets of Indianapolis, an honor that they didn't give to those kids 60 years ago. And at this year's Indy 500, the 1955 Christmas Addicts basketball team served as the grand marshals of the Indy 500 festival parade. For the first time in the parade's history, there was a stop at Monument Circle where the Flying Tigers got the celebration they had rightfully earned so long ago. Today, I'm proud to join my friend, Congressman Andre Carson, in honoring the legacy of the 1955 Crispus Attucks basketball team. As Indiana Senator, on behalf of Hoosiers, I want to recognize the Crispus Attucks team not only for their amazing accomplishments on the court, but for the powerful message they always sent throughout the state of Indiana and for the pride that is still present in Indianapolis today for them and for all their accomplishments and for all they mean to us. The members of the 1955 state championship Christmas Attucks basketball team, their coaches, 
the teachers who taught them, the community that supported them, and the families that loved them. They were an inspiration in 1955 to all of us, and they are an inspiration today. God bless all of those young players. God bless Indiana, and God bless America.